Hi, I'm Tom and Homi from Dell EMC. In this demonstration video, I'm going to introduce Dell EMC CSM Resiliency and show you how to install the new module and simulate the failure to demonstrate how it works. CSM Resiliency is a project designed to make Kubernetes applications, including those who utilize persistent storage, more resilient to various failures. The first component of CSM Resiliency is a pod monitor that is specifically designed to protect stateful applications from various failures. It's not a standalone application, but rather is deployed as a sidecar to CSI drivers. Deploying CSM Resiliency as a sidecar container allows it to make direct requests to the driver through the Unix domain socket that Kubernetes sidecars use to make CSI requests. CSM Resiliency is primarily designed to detect pod failures due to some kind of node failures or node communication failures. The Kubernetes worker nodes can run a mix of CSM Resiliency monitored application pods as well as unmonitored application ports. Monitor pods are designated by a specific label that is applied to each monitored pod. The label key and the values are configurable for each driver type when CSM Resiliency is installed and must be unique for each driver instance. The worker nodes are assumed to also have a connection to the storage system, such as Parflex. It is often preferred that a separate network be used for storage access from the network used by the Kubernetes control plane, and CSM Resiliency takes advantage of separate networks when available. CSM Resiliency design is focused on detecting the following types of failures node failures, which is defined to be similar to a power failure of the node, Kubernetes control plane network failure, and IO network failure, which is detected by polling the array to determine if the array has a healthy connection to the node. Parflex is a highly scalable array that is well suited to Kubernetes deployments. The CSM resiliency support for Parflex leverages the following Parflex features. Very quick detection of array IO network connectivity status change. A robust mechanism if nodes are doing IO to volumes. Low latency REST API supports fast CSI provisioning and deprovisioning operations. A proprietary network protocol provided by the SDC component that can run over the same IP interface as a Kubernetes control plane or over a separate IP interface for the array IO. With that, Let's start with the installation. CSM Resiliency is deployed as part of the CSI driver deployment. The first thing we need to do is adding the following line, march propagation bidirectional to the podmon container sections of the chart for each mount path. For reference, the entire node.yaml file with the change applied is available on the GitHub page. Next, we need to add the podmon details to the values.yaml file of the CSI driver. There is a podmon block specified in the values.yaml file of the chart. Here is a typical deployment for Parflex. Parflex supports a very robust array connection validation mechanism that can detect changes in connectivity in about two seconds and can detect whether IO has occurred over a five second sample. For that reason, it is recommended to set the skip array connection validation to false and set the array connectivity poll rate to 5 and the array connectivity connection loss threshold to 3 or more. Now, all we need to do is run the Helm installer and specify the new values file at the namespace. For the purpose of this demo, I'm using a virtual OpenShift 4.6 cluster which has three master nodes and three worker nodes. The cluster is connected to a Parflex system via the CSI driver. By navigating to the Logs tab, we can see that in addition to the default sidecar containers, we have a Podmon controller container and not Podmon container running on each OpenShift node. Generally, controller Podmon and the driver controller pods are deployed using deployment. The deployment support one or more replicas for high availability and use a standard Kubernetes leader election protocol so that only one controller is active at a time. The controller deployment 
also supports a node selector that allows the controllers to be placed on Kubernetes masters and not worker nodes. Node Podmon and the driver node pods are deployed in a daemon set, with a pod deployed on every Kubernetes worker node. Controller Podmon is responsible for setting a watch for CSM resiliency labeled pods, periodically polling the array to see if it has a connectivity to the nodes that are hosting CSM resiliency labeled pod, and tainting the nodes that have failed. Node Podmon is responsible for establishing a pod watch, which is used to maintain a list of pods executing on the node that may need to be cleaned up, periodically to see if a controller Podmon has applied a taint to the node, and removing the taint placed on nodes by the controller Podmon upon successful cleanup. For the purpose of this demo, I'm using a cloud-native distributed database called Yugad by DB, which consists of three master and three worker nodes by default. Each pod has a persistent volume claim from the Parflex system. The first thing we need to remember about CSM resiliency is that it only takes action on pods configured with the designated label. Both the key and the value have to match what's in the pod's helm configuration. As you can see here, I added the following label to the pods in this stateful set, podmon.dellmc.com slash driver and then CSI VIX FlexOS. Now, let's deploy the application using the OC create command. As you can see, within a few seconds, the pods are up and running, connected to their Parflex persistent volumes. If I run the OC get pods minus label and specify the label, we can see that the label is applied on those pods as well. We can navigate to the application UI to see the different database components. Right now, there is no load running on it. Let's run some key value workload on the database. As you can see, the load is distributed across the multiple worker pods and the persistent volumes. Now, it's time to demonstrate the power of CSM resiliency. By default, when a Kubernetes node crashes or has a network connectivity failure, the stateful set pods running on this node crashes and manual intervention is required to fix those pods and volumes to reschedule them on different Kubernetes node. CSM resiliency handles these operations automatically whether the Kubernetes node crashes, disconnected from the Kubernetes control plane network, or lose access to the storage. As you can see here, four out of six pods are running on node 187. I'm going to force disconnect the node from the network so it loses access to both the OpenShift API and the Parflex storage system, and let's see what happens to the application. Within a few seconds, the node is marked as not ready. Podmon is detecting the failure and automatically rescheduling the failed pods on the other nodes in the cluster and asking the CSI driver to unmap and map the persistent volumes to the online OpenShift worker nodes. If we go to OpenShift UI and click on that node, we can see that Podmon applied a no schedule taint on the node. It is polling the node connectivity to Kubernetes control plane and the storage node and not allowing the pods to be rescheduled on this node. If I reconnect the node to the network, Kubernetes is detecting the change and marking the node as ready. Podmon automatically removing the taint, allowing new pods to be rescheduled on this node. By navigating to the Yugabyte database UI, you can see that the load is still running, and once the pod is back online, connected to the existing persistent volume, it will continue participating in the distributed workload and acting as part of the cluster. There is no need for a full rebuild process at the application level, just delta syncs as the application didn't reach the pod's maximum timeout limit. 
I really hope you find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.